Well, here we are. It's that time of the month again. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's that time again uh, for recent vinyl finds or used vinyl finds or whatever you want to call it. And this time it's going to be all jazz. So if you're a jazz fan, stick around. The best I'm going to save for last. So, cue music. Now, I want to start by apologizing to Michael and also to thank him so, so much for sending me these books. I did a video um, a couple of months ago, I think, uh, on jazz-related books that I have in my collection. Michael uh, got in, in, in contact with me and said that he had some duplicates, so he sent me some all the way from the US. And uh, I was so blown away when I got it. So thank you so much. This is Bill Evans, How My Heart Sings. It's been on my want list for uh, quite some time and this is fantastic cover artwork there. This is Miles Davis. So what? The, my, uh, the life of Miles Davis. Those three. So thank you so much Michael. Be sure to get over to Michael's channel. It's called Notes and Tones and subscribe to him and watch his uh, latest Vinyl Tag video 2022. Some epic stuff on there so thank you again Michael thank you so much so on to the records okay I'm gonna start with some new records this is the first one uh, obviously I bought this uh, the recent classic series from uh, Tom Tom <laughs> Blue Note Records uh, this is introducing Kenny Cox and the contemporary jazz quintet from 1967 or 68 I think this was originally released uh, now with the sort of Kevin Gray mastered love on it and it sounds fantastic. Uh, Kenny Cox, piano player, um, he was the the guy who invented the Strata label, so Strata East, Strata, Strata East, West, I think. <laughs> Push it. Uh, and this really swings. Uh, a perfect post bop uh, record and Kevin Gray did a fantastic work on, on this. Each and, and every instrument, and there are a few, are perfectly separated. This is a master. This is sound quality to die for, really. They are keeping, putting out fantastic, fantastic records. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, this next one, uh, also a classic series and finally, finally in my collection. This is uh, Where is Brooklyn by uh, Don Cherry. And listen to this lineup. Don Cherry, Pharaoh Sanders, Henry Grimes and Ed Blackwell on drums. Produced by Alfred Lyon, uh, Lyon and uh, all compositions are done by uh, Don Cherry. Moki Cherry did the artwork. This was released in 1969 uh, but originally recorded in 1966. So this is before he went to Sweden and did the more sort of... This is a free jazz record but later on it got a little bit more, um, dare I say, spiritual. This sums up Don Cherry uh, all in one record, in my opinion. And again, Kevin Gray, perfect, 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 perfect mastery. <laughs> it's a good time to be a jazz collector, let's just say that. Once again, I bought a jazz collection and this one was pretty good. I kept the raisins uh, from the cake, gonna sell the rest of it. And in that collection, I just want to show you was this. Uh, not a, a super exciting record, but it's sealed, and I never see sealed records. This is John Coltrane's um, Trains Modes, number uh, number four, volume four, in this sort of series, done by Michael Cascuna. Outtakes from 1961 on two LPs with uh, John Coltrane. I have this in my collection, but I don't have it sealed. <laughs> 1979! This has been sealed since 1979. Uh, Insane. Okay, so cheap, uh, cheap heat on Dragon. This is Swedish Jazz. This was released in 1980 and the entire series, I'm, I'm going to try to find the entire series. This is volume 4. So what we have here is Lars Gullin and I've talked about him a lot, but he deserves to be talked about. <laughs> One of the most, if not the most, acclaimed jazz mu musicians in, in Swedish history. This is recording from 1959 to 60. I think they are all um, unissued before, at least on uh, at this point in 1980. And it's great. There's um, the first side is mono, the, the second side is stereo. Different lineups. I'm not a completist, but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm seeing a pattern here. Um, 
when it comes to Lars Gullin. When it comes to Jack McDuff, I have to say that it's a hit and miss. Um, I don't collect his stuff, but this was in one of those big collections that I bought, so next to nothing. And I'm, I decided to, to keep this in my collection. It's, I, I mean, I still think that Moonwrapping is one of the best ones that he, he um, put out. And he put out so much, like really, he spewed out records after record. This is 1968. The record lineup is uh, Jack McDuff, Red uh, Holloway, George Benson and uh, Joe Dukes. Uh, and it's Hammond bass soulful jazz all the way through and their sound quality on this was not the best. So I mean I don't have much Brother Jack McDuff in my collection but I think that of the stuff that I have this is probably the, the, the worst one. But I think that there are worse in his collection than, than uh, or in his catalog than, than this one. So not super recommended maybe for completists. This next one has been on my want list for some time. In 2020 I saw that Analog Productions uh, was issuing this. I didn't jump on the hype train, maybe I should, but I wanted a, a sort of earlier press of this because I wanted to feel the sort of history's wingspan, whatever. The record I'm talking about is, is Henry... Uh, Henry. <laughs> Helen Merrill, uh, self-titled record 1955. Uh, I think this was recorded in 54 and this is a late 70s Japanese press that I read sounds terrific and yeah I agree but uh, it would be nice to compare it to analog productions because this deserves to sound great and it sounds good. It's part of the emergency jazz series that they put out on Mercury um, yeah Japanese press as I said I mean one, one of those sort of iconic iconic um, jazz vocal records if there ever was one deserves to be in every jazz collection and finally in mine the next one i bought on chance but then again buying this artist on chance you you don't need to to take a ch chance it's all good 1968 paul blay uh, mr joy and paul blay was not a, a new name on the sort of jazz circuit at this point in 1968 but it's still a, free jazz avant-garde uh, take on the sort of the, the sort of genre. Uh, with him he has bassist and drummer uh, Gary Peacock and Billy Elgott and I think that this is a wonderful wonderful record. I mean he, he had jumped around a little bit on different labels but in, in this this uh, at this point in his career he ended up at uh, Limelight and pressing quality and stuff like that maybe could have been better I don't know uh, I don't think that Limelight is one of those record labels that that you write home about telling your mama, <laughs> your mama how, how good it sounds. But, but um, this is, is uh, studio material and live uh, takes. All tracks, except for the title track, Mr. Joy, I think, is penned by um, Annette Peacock. Great addition to the sort of small but ever-growing Paul Blay part of my collection. Uh, this uh, next one uh, was also one that I, I took a chance on and I, I'm so glad I did. I, I've never heard about uh, O'Donnell Levy or Levy uh, before. Dawn of a New Day 1973 arranged and conducted by Manny album and this album is great. Now um, O'Donnell Levy uh, is a guitarist uh, brought up uh, toured with George Benson and Jimmy McGriff so he had a smaller career. Now he, he um, he studied music and he went on to, to uh, be mostly a jazz and funk sort of guitarist. With this record, he blends the sort of style of Wes Montgomery and Grant, Grant Green uh, with the arranged and conducted music by Manny Album. And that sort of big band um, orchestrated sort of sound along with his guitar is great and it doesn't hurt that the sound quality of this is really really good for being a groove merchant which I don't find as a, one of those like great sounding labels but this sounds great really really happy to uh, take a chance on this fantastic record highly recommend it so I don't think that Max Roach uh, the drummer from North Carolina needs any uh, sort of introduction one of the absolute pillars of jazz drummers if there ever was one. This is the award-winning drummer from 1960. So this is uh, just in between We Insist that came 1961 which is a classic in his catalog, one that I still need to find. And um, 
drum is united maybe okay fuck it uh, he was jumping around a little bit on on different sort of labels and this time he he <laughs> this time he went to time uh, a label i have nothing with besides this now uh, but it sounds great really really good and this is an original stereo press from uh, 1960 i'm so glad that i i found this it's it's not super expensive uh, High quality, great lineup. Book a little, Arthur Davis, George Coleman, and Ray Draper on tuba. Sounds great, but it's not super expensive. So I urge everyone to to pick uh, pick this up if you find it. This was also one a part of that sort of big collection that I bought. So I got it for next to nothing, and I'm so glad I did. Okay, this next one. I'm gonna swing by this uh, pretty fast because it's a Swedish record. I don't know if you're interested in that. This has been on my want list for a while. And 1957, Bengt Hallberg, the pianist, uh, released this. It's just a trio record, but what a record. He's playing his heart out. I don't think that I've ever heard uh, Bengt Hallberg play this good. Now I'm spitting on the record. <laughs> Thank God for the plastic! If you want to check it out, if you're interested, uh, he does a fantastic version of Summertime, so you can listen to that on YouTube. Um, this next one was also in that uh, collection that I bought, and this is, this is awesome. 1959 Junior. Uh, the guy's called Junior Ma Mans, and his swinging piano, so obviously a piano player. He, um, I think he was born in Illinois or something like that, but he moved to New York after... Um, uh, Charlie Parker convinced him to to go there and he played in the sort of New York circuit around that time now um, After he did a session with this Gillespie one of the Verve um, Associates uh, let him record his first solo record, which is this one. It's a trio setting So you have Junior Mace on piano Ray Brown on bass and Lex Humphrey on on drums It's it's a nice little post bop sort of Piece. It's not the best one. It's not the worst one. Definitely not. Uh, I liked it a lot. And scoring this for next to nothing, uh, uh, first U.S. stereo press from 1959 on Verve in fantastic shape. It's just a dream come true, really. And it's not super expensive. You can get this pretty e easily. And I urge everyone, if you see it, um, pick it up. Okay, this next one is. I've, I've seen some reviews online for uh, this when I when I. Played it. I, I read about the, the music when I, I played it, and and uh, this gets a lot of slack. I think it's a fantastic record. Like, it's a four out of five in my book. And this is uh, this is Ray Brown, so the bass player for Oscar Peterson, most famous for. He's played with Dizzy Gillespie and and uh, Ella Fitzgerald. This is his second or third solo outing on on Verve Records uh, from 19. 58 and you have a killer lineup on this also Ray Brown uh, as I said on bass uh, Oscar Peterson on piano so he and, and organ Herb uh, Ellis on guitar Ossie Johnson on, on drums and Jerome Richardson on flute and the flute plays a pretty big role in this even if the bass is just I managed to to find in that sort of great big collection I, I bought uh, I managed to find a Japanese press from 1981 Mrs. Deobi unfortunately but it uh, it's in near mint condition sounds great i have nothing to compare it to but this sounds as good as anything else great record underrated maybe in this sort of genre uh, but if you're into bop i guess that this is a, a, a fantastic record to me it's a fantastic record. if you know about this uh, please comment because can't understand the, the sort of the douchey comments that they got in different reviews and stuff like that. I, I don't I don't get it. Okay, uh, two more to go, and both of these are from this uh, big jazz collection that I, I bought. And this next one is it's not expensive. It doesn't seem to be hard to find. Um, it's not particularly good in sound, um, but the music is great. Uh, and I'm talking about this. This is uh, Jazz Goes to College by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, 1954, and this is uh, original first press. Uh, it's with the red label with silver lettering. And as I said, it's not an expensive record, but everything about this just goes around in my tummy. I get butterflies when I see this and, and listen to it because it's such a early piece by one of the biggest names in in jazz so when you listen to it you're really listening to history being made and 
having the first one, 1954, and I'm still able to play it on my system here, and I can add it to the collection. It's just uh, one of the, one of many, but one of the fine things about this hobby, collecting records. This is a fucking artifact, isn't it? This belongs in a museum, and you can get this for 10 euro bucks or whatever you want to call it. It's insane. Great. And last but not least, I wouldn't say it's a grail record. <laughs> yeah, tossing around the old grail term again, but um, it's 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 a nice find in that sort of huge record collection I bought. This is uh, Six Pieces of Silver by Hor Horace Silver Quintet. So you have Donald Byrd, Hank Mobley, or Silver, Doug Watkins, and Louis Haynes on drums. Uh, what a lineup. This was just released on that sort of classic uh, Blue Note series that they uh, put out. I bought it. It sounds good. Um, but this is the second mono press on Blue Note. And how I know that is because... Uh, this is the 47 West and 63rd um, New York label, but with sort of ordinary lettering. The first issue was in sort of scribbled lettering, so that's how you see the, the difference. But this sounds great, and this person who had this collection before me, uh, he took care of his records. I know that this looks a little bit uh, worn and it, the cover is, but the record is in fantastic condition. There's a scratch on the last song and I can feel it with my finger, but the grooves is so deep that you can't hear the scratch when you play the record. It's insane. These old Blue Note records will, they, will survive all the craziness in the world right now. This and the cockroaches. So that's it. Super glad to add those to my uh, record collection. If you haven't, please subscribe. And I talk to you in my next video. Bye. And thank you, Michael, again for the books. So kind of you. Bye.